Make your WooCommerce checkout page look like Shopify's. A step-by-step -step guide, no coding required. If you watch this entire video until the end, you should be able to increase your conversion rate and make more profit with your WooCommerce store. Plus, I'll share some tips that I learned from this recent A-B test that I did on my checkout page and let you know what I did to boost my sales with this design. So, why is all of this important? The frustrated preneur sits there checking their Facebook ads account, pulling their hair out. Their ads are working. They're getting great click-through rates and cheap add to carts and initiate checkouts, but no one is purchasing from their WooCommerce checkout page. But you can't blame the customers. When the page loads, there are a lot of fields all at once on the one page, which is very overwhelming. It falls in the too hard basket for a lot of customers who can't be bothered to complete the long form. Some customers who get to the page can't help but think it looks like a dull Craigslist type of page, it feels cheap and untrustworthy. The credit card form looks experimental. It looks like it's not finished, ready to scam the customers out of their hard earned money. For the rare courageous customers who look past these glaring issues, they get to entering their first and last name, but after not too long are eventually scared off by the unprofessional form and leave. Worst of all, because the email field to collect the customer's email was at the bottom of the form and wasn't filled out, the frustrated preneur has no way of contacting this customer in the future. All that advertising money to get the potential customer from the ad to the checkout page lost down the drain. Deflated, defeated, the frustrated printer closes their laptop, head in hands, stress <laughs> takes over and they get back into bed. But the successful printer the successful printer opens their laptop and checks their ad account, drinking the finest of wine in the morning. Why? Of course, because they're successful. The ads are going great. The click-through rate is looking good. People are getting to the checkout page and the ROAS is looking great. When customers get to the checkout page, they see a modern design that feels familiar. It reminds them of a checkout page they saw when they were buying makeup last week. Also, it reminds them of when they bought their active wear this morning from Gymshark. This instills confidence in the customer Customers, so they continue and they complete the purchase from the website. The form looks quick to complete because there aren't too many fields on the page at once. It's inviting, it guides them through the checkout process from putting in their email to entering their shipping details and then proceeding to put in their payment info. But not all customers have the time to complete the form then and there. Some customers are at the office and happen to stumble across the successful preneur's ad while in their lunch break. They put their email address in, then their name. They're out of time, they need to go back to work, so they exit their browser. These customers are extremely important because they want to spend their hard earned cash, but now is an inconvenient time. Thankfully, as the email field was right at the top of the checkout form, the successful printer is able to email these customers using an abandoned cart sequence. This sends the customer's emails to their inbox with a link so that that customer can click go back to checkout and purchase at any time that is convenient for them in the future. This makes a successful printer a a lot more profit and allows them to run a successful business. So we're about to get into the exact tutorial and I'm gonna show you how to make a Shopify checkout design with your WooCommerce website step by step. But I just wanna mention that for anyone that's just landed on this video, I make WordPress tutorials here on YouTube and they're all about helping you, the solopreneur, go from frustrated preneur to successful preneur and make more money with WordPress and also learn how to set up your website. So if that sounds like something you're trying to do online, this is the channel that you want to be subscribed to. So the structure of today's video is I'm going to give you exactly what you came to this video for. I'm going to show you how to set up that Shopify design with your WooCommerce checkout page. And we're going to be using a plugin to do so. And then I'm going to spend the remainder of this video going through all the different settings inside this plugin. The important ones, I'm going to show you how to set up some AB tests for your checkout page. So now let's get into the next thing, which is how to actually go and set up this Shopify design in our WooCommerce store. So to convert our WooCommerce checkout page into a design like Shopify's, we're going to be using this plugin here, WooFunnels. So the way that we do that is if we go to our website now, and let's just say we add a beanie to cart, and then we go to our checkout page. This is what our design currently looks like using the 2022 theme. So this is referred to in WooFunnels as the global checkout. It's the main checkout for your website, i.e. global. So what we want to do now is let's go back to our website. And here we're going to go to WooFunnels and we're going to go to Funnels. And this is only going to take a minute, if not less. Like I'm being serious. Watch this already. Add new funnel. And here we'll type global checkout, add. 
And then here we want to go to checkout. I'm going to use Elementor for this. We're going to go to three steps. We're going to cover all these designs and all the um, functionality throughout here later on in this video. Uh, but for now, we're going to just go and we're going to go import. This one looks like Shopify's. And then here, shop checkout. If we go down to settings and then we're going to go to checkout and then global checkout here, this is a default. We're going to change it to the one that we just created and click save. Now go back. And if we refresh this checkout design, we now have Shopify's design on our WooCommerce global checkout. Now to edit the logo here, you just go edit with Elementor, just like any other page builder and just swap out the logo there. It's just an image module on the page, but I want to show you how this functions straight out of the box. So let's go down and we're going to add this beanie to cart. And then let's go to the checkout page. So in this successful preneur intro video that I made for you guys, I said that the email field up the top allows you to recover the abandoned checkouts because you're grabbing the email address straight up. You have a way to contact them. So it's really important that you have this here. And again, straight out of the box, it's up the top here. Now I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the rest of this form. So if I click continue shipping, we're going to go from the information to the shipping. So if I go like this, you can see what I just added is saved up the top here so that I can see any mistakes that I made while filling out the previous step. And now I'm choosing my shipping. So I'll go, let's go express shipping and then go continue to payment. Now we're in the payment tab. Now I can review my email, where it's shipping to and the method of shipping. So really helpful to know that the customer knows if they've entered anything incorrectly. I can't stress how good it is to have this up the top. And then lastly, pointing out the credit card field, it's all styled, the PayPal, it looks good. Like everything is just nice and clean. If you're looking for Shopify specifically that design, this is literally it. You guys saw me do everything from install the plugin, activate global checkout, and then it just works like this. And it looks trustworthy compared to the other solutions that are out there on the market. So, so if this answers the question that you had while looking for a video like this, then there's going to be links in the description below for you to go and use my affiliate links if you want to sign up to WooFunnels. Uh, that's the way that I support this channel. I have a blog post that goes through the lifetime deal, why I bought it, how much it is and where to find it on their website because it's a little bit hard to find the lifetime deal. Now, the rest of this video is going to be showing you how to use this plugin, how powerful it is, a, B tests, how to set them up and some ideas of the different ways that you can customize this plugin and your WooCommerce checkout to make more money from your WooCommerce website. So let's get into the next section. So I think it would be really valuable for you watching this video to show you how you set up what we just did with each different page builder. Because if you're not using Elementor, then you might want to see how it's done with Beaver Builder and so on. So that's what this section is going to do. So let's go ahead and I'm going to rename this because we've just done it with Elementor and we'll go edit. And then here I'll go global checkout. And then here I'll just write, okay, so that's the Elementor one. Now let's go back to our funnels. So now let's go ahead and do it with Gutenberg. So let's go add new and then here I'll write like that, add. Okay, so the same process, so under checkout. Now you wanna select over here, we're gonna to go to Gutenberg and then we're gonna do the three step as well and we're gonna choose the same design. Now, what it will do, I've actually got it already installed, but if we go to plugins and installed plugins and we scroll down to Sling Block. So Sling Blocks is a Gutenberg Blocks plugin developed by WooFunnels. So they've gone out and basically got the funnel builder and then they needed to develop Gutenberg Blocks to work with it. And that's what they've called their plugin, Sling Blocks. So it's a free plugin. Uh, when you go ahead and try and build a funnel using Gutenberg, a pop-up comes up and says, do you want to install Sling Blocks? You say yes, and it installs. So that's basically the, the only difference there. Okay, and now if we preview this, so you can see it looks exactly the same. Uh, there's a little bit of styling off here. It's just a simple CSS fix, and it probably is just because I'm using the 2022 theme. Uh, your theme might handle this a little bit differently, so I wouldn't really worry about that. It's a really easy fix. Besides that button there, it all looks the same. It, it functions the same if we go continue shipping, Right, like that. If we go to continue payment, it's like that. So it looks exactly the same. Now, if we go to edit and there it is. And if we just click over here, we can see our tree. So you can see it's exactly, you guys, if you're using Gutenberg, you guys, I don't have to run you through it. You got blocks here, the mini cart over here. That would be a sling block uh, that came from that sling blocks plugin. But yeah, this is what it looks like. If you want to edit the logo, again, you just click on it and you would just replace it over here. Exactly the same as a normal editor. And I didn't show you guys with the um, Elementor one, but if we go back here and we just clicked edit with Elementor, you can see it's the same thing as you're used to editing any page with Elementor. So to change this image, you go choose image, you put your logo up there. So I'll just go wage pirate like that. If you click onto this here, 
You can enable or disable the breadcrumb. So you have a few options that are specific to the modules on the Elementor page. So that's Elementor, uh, that's Gutenberg. Let's go back and we'll do uh, funnels. Let's go add new and we're gonna do Beaver Builder. So let's go global, let's go global checkout and we'll go BB for Beaver Builder. Okay, so let's go to checkouts. And then over here, we're going to go to other. And then you have these different layouts of forms. I won't go into that in this video here. It's a little bit irrelevant uh, for the global checkout. We'll be using a checkout form. And then here for checkout form, we'll click import. There it is. And let's just view this one now. Okay, so there it is. Now let's go and edit this with Beaver Builder. And then here I'll just click to edit the module and you can see it's a text editor and it has a short code that outputs the checkout forms for the WooFunnels plugin. So it's a bit different there with Beaver Builder. If you are using Beaver Builder and you're a little bit more technical, I would say you could definitely achieve something that's similar. You would have to design the sidebar. You'd have your short code here for the form um, and you have, if we, uh, let's just save this. You have some other short codes accessible so you can put the, the sidebar cart that we have in the other designs. So if we just preview this one here. So for this sidebar, uh, there is a short code. So if we actually edit this checkout page, so if we go over here, you can see it's on the side here. So form short code, that's the one for the main form. And then this one would be for the mini cart. Let's actually copy this and we'll launch Beaver Builder again. And then let's add a new column. We'll drag it over there. Okay, now we wanna add a text module and we'll just paste in there, save. And there it is there. Again, you could achieve the same thing, but you're just using short codes to render it on the screen. So really it isn't that much harder. I use Beaver Builder and so I just go ahead and do this. I give this column a gray background over here. This just works exactly the same. Uh, and then you're just putting a logo up the top. So that's how you go ahead and customize your WooCommerce checkout page to look like Shopify's using those three page builders, which are basically the ones that I'm used to. Uh, there was other ones as well as we go back here. You do have Divi and Oxygen. I actually haven't used them. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you are using them. But if they are listed there, they will have integrated modules. So they'll work similar to Elemental where you actually drag a cart module into the page when you're building the page. Whereas Other, which is Beaver Builder, and it doesn't have that integration, you're designing the page using Beaver Builder and then you're adding a short code to output the forms there. That's the differences there. So we need to understand some terminology within the WooFunnels plugin so that we can make sense of where to find everything and you know what checkout layouts are changing what parts of our website. So if we go down to WooFunnels and we go to settings, these are our global settings for the WooFunnels plugin. So you can actually go ahead and build sales funnels inside WooFunnels. And so the global checkout is different. Funnels are their own separate sort of like block their own component. Under here settings, the global settings, this is our main WooCommerce website. So why that's important is if we go to checkouts and we saw this at the start of the video, if we go to global checkout, this is the global checkout that will replace the default WooCommerce checkout page. So we have it set to this one here. So this is when people go to our website and they add products to cart. So let's just say we add this, like a normal shopping experience and then they go to the checkout page. This design here within WooFunnels is referenced as the global checkout. So that's what they're referring to there. And that's what we set there. And to do that, again, we went to funnels and then it was our, we, we created a new funnel and it had one step in the funnel, which was this checkout design. And then we went to the global settings and made this the global checkout. So if we go back to funnels, the way that you don't get confused about that is that it has um, this hyphen global on the end of it. I sort of confused you because I added the word global here myself, um, but it adds it here. So you just know that this is your normal WooCommerce default checkout design. Now, the alternative to that is your sales funnels that have their own checkout forms. So I'll go and show you how to create one of them because we're gonna need to understand this again before we go and look at the designs that are available to us. So if we go and let's just create a new funnel. So we go here and I'll call this sales funnel. Okay, your sales funnels are like what you'd set up inside ClickFunnels if you're used to doing something like that. If you're not using sales funnels, I definitely recommend for your WooCommerce website giving it a go in 2022. Last year, my store did $3.8 million. We spent 
a lot of money on Facebook ads and no ads. Basically, none of that ad spent went to our normal WooCommerce website. Every dollar basically went to a sales funnel. So you definitely want to be doing that. You have an ad for a specific product. It goes to a landing page or a sales page that sells that specific product in more detail. They click and go to an order form that gives them testimonials and sells them on that same product to convince them to purchase. Then you have your upsells and downsells post-purchase that are related to that one product. So here under funnels and sales funnels, let's go ahead and then here we go down and let's just say we like this one here. It has four steps and we're going to click import. And now you can see we have a sales funnel that has our landing page or our sales page, a checkout form, an upsell and a thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and open these up now. So we have this sales page that is selling this particular offer. So it's saying 20% off all skincare products. When they click this button, people would then go to this checkout form and they're buying that one specific product. So instead of browsing our website and adding products to cart and building their cart and then going to our global checkout form, we've actually designed a sales funnel that has its own buying experience and it only sells one product or a particular set of products. And this order form, this checkout page design is different to our global checkout design. So it's a very important distinguish, um, thing that we need to distinguish before we move out throughout this rest of this tutorial is that our global checkout is our main shopping experience, adding products to cart. All the other checkouts on our website can be in sales funnels and each different sales funnel can have its own checkout design. So this one here has like upsell design here, has a thank you page. This is our sales funnel that we just set up. This checkout page design here, again, is different to our global checkout. The global checkout, the thing that you basically were searching for YouTube, how to make your WooCommerce checkout page look like Shopify's, the global checkout, that's probably the most basic feature that WooFunnels offers. It does so much more complex stuff. So now that we know the difference between our global checkout and that we can build sales funnels and have different checkout pages for each, let's go through the out of the box designs that come with WooFunnels in the next section. So let's go ahead and create a new funnel and we'll click add. Okay, so now these tabs make a little bit more sense to us. So funnels, these are our complete sales funnels with multiple steps. So it has the step number here, four steps. It's gonna have your sales page, your checkout page, an upsell page, and a thank you page. So you can go through and have a look at these. Uh, all the designs match for all the steps. So uh, if we were to have a look at like this one here for a beehive face mask and click preview, we have our sales page, checkout page, one click upsell design, and then our thank you page. So if we close that, right, that's sales funnels. We have our opt-in page designs, sales page designs, and then our checkouts. And then we have one step, two step and three step up the top. So a one step, if we have a look at this one here, this would be basically all your form fields load on the one page and there's none of that tabbed like this. So it's just all shipping information, shipping method, your products, and then place order. And then the two step, it would break it into two parts. And then the three step, if we have a look at this one here, you can see we have information, shipping, and payment where they can tab and go through. So I've done some tests. I've tested the full one step versus the three step. The three step is the one that I'm currently using on my website because it outperformed the one step. So there we go. So that's the different um, steps there, but the designs throughout are basically similar. So even though we're not looking in these two tabs, we'll stick to the three step. Another tip that I'd give is that for your global checkout, uh, which is your main checkout where people are adding to cart and going to the checkout. I would probably want to make it look like a normal e-commerce website like Shopify because people are expecting it because they're used to it. And so you want to try and not be too outside the box and too different. You can do that a little bit with your sales funnels, but I would recommend starting off with an e-commerce like design. So we're going to focus on those ones in this video. So we'll have a look at this one, which looks like this. I quite like how it boxes out the different information on the page. It makes it quite easy to read big button, go to the next step, select their shipping, go to the final step. And it's like this. It's a bit more e-commerce-y, but I, I quite like that. Uh, if we have a look, so we have our Shopify design that we've already looked at. Uh, we can go down. So this one here has the multi-step, like two-step order form click funnels vibe. I feel like this would be a quite a nice one to do. So you have your testimonials at the bottom. You have your tabs up here. It's not too different from a normal e-commerce websites checkout. So I feel like this is quite nice. And then we have this one here. 
So like this. So it's got the floating fields, round buttons. So that's a quick overview of some of the designs that come out of the box. Again, you can customize it and build your page any way that you like using your favorite page builder. This is just what's available there. And also I just want to give you an idea of like what's available. I will mention before we go into the next section uh, that I have the pro version installed. So some of these designs will be locked if you're using the free version. So if you're wondering what the difference is there. But as you can see out of the box, you have some really good designs here that are probably worth just importing two of these out of the box designs, customizing it to match your branding, setting up an A-B test, and then just seeing which one outperforms the other one. And then the winner, just you know, make a variation of that and go from there. So that wraps up this section. So next I wanna show you how to set up an A-B test for your checkout page inside WooFunnels here. And then in the next part, I'm gonna give you some ideas of the different tests you could go and set up. So let's go ahead. So the first thing is that it is a separate plugin. It's called A-B Experiments for WooFunnels. When you purchase WooFunnels, you you get this free, it's just in your account inside the WooFunnels website. They've just separated it out, I guess, because some people just want the WooFunnels plugin and then they have the experiments here as a separate plugin, just so they don't bloat the other plugin for people that don't wanna set up experiments. So I guess that's why they separated it out here. But uh, basically when you purchase WooFunnels, this comes for free. So you activate that and then under WooFunnels, you have this experiments menu item and then create experiment. And you can A-B test anything inside your funnels. It's really powerful. So on your checkout page, uh, I'll show you the order bump actually in an upcoming section in this video. But for example, your one click upsells. So when somebody purchases from your global checkout, you could show them a one-time offer. You can actually set up experiments to test what that offer page's design looks like. And then you could also set it up that you could have different products in the upsells and then you monitor it and whichever one makes you the most profit, that would be the one that you keep. So you can test, yeah, designs and products there, but we're gonna focus on the checkout page designs for this um, video here. So we go checkout page, save and continue. And then the original variant, we're gonna test the global checkout design in this example. So that's our global checkout. Name our experiment, so global checkout. And then we'll just do initial design test. And the way that I would actually recommend to do this, which is what we're gonna do, is just get two of their out of box designs, run the test, whichever one converts at the highest rate and makes you the most profit. Then the next test that you would do in the future, you would just clone that and then change something and then let that run, okay? And just optimize it over time. But I think the best test that you can do out of the box here is just get two out of the box templates. I'd probably suggest the Shopify one and another one and let that run and then go from there. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Now now our original variant at the global checkout already is the Shopify design. So let's go and we're going to duplicate the variant and then configure traffic and straight out the box, you can do whatever you want here. Let's just do uh, 50 for each. So 50 and 50 update. Now for our variant, let's edit this. And then here, I'm just going to remove this template and then we're gonna select the next one. So we're gonna do three steps. We're gonna keep it consistent. You don't wanna to change too many things. So uh, what I would recommend is if you have a three step initially for the global checkout and you're creating this variant here, you don't wanna go and make this one a one step and a completely different design because you're changing the purchase behavior and you're changing the design. I think just keep things, only change one thing at a time. Right now, we're gonna keep the buying experience exactly the same, three steps. We're just gonna change the design. So let's go and choose another design. So we have this one in our global checkout currently. Let's go with this one here. So we'll import. So that's it there. We can preview it. So I'll just go ahead and change this logo really quickly like so. And then I'll just make this black. And let's maybe actually change this button color as well. So here under style, let's go down and we're just gonna go to button. And then here, I would just make it a green color and just like that. And just a quick side note here, if you aren't doing anything with your checkouts, I would just make a test and just change this button color. That's a test, that's a good test. If you don't wanna go and change the design completely, just try A-B testing the button color. But we'll just do that there like so, and then we'll update it. So now that we've finished that design, if we go back, so you can see we have our original, which is the Shopify and the variant we just set up, 50% each, and then we go start. So you can pause and restart at any time, adjust the traffic while it's running and remove a variant if you don't wanna use it anymore. So we go start. And now that's running and you have some stats here. You can see revenue per visit, conversion rate, and so on. So let's go ahead and just uh, fire that and show you guys how that works. So we'll go to a private window. So I'll add a beanie and then we'll go to the checkout page. So this is our original global variant. And if we go back here and refresh, we should just get an increment for that one. So you can see one view. Now let's actually open up a new private window and try and get this variant. So here, let's go ahead and add the beanie again. And then we'll go to the checkout. 
and now we've got that variation. So you can see how easy that is to do. You can build these pages using your favorite uh, WordPress page builder. The A-B tests happen within WooFunnels, within your WordPress dashboard. You're not having to go and set up in Google Optimize or pay for something else that A-B testing software is not cheap these days. You're paying like a hundred bucks a month for a lot of them. So uh, to be able to do this so fast inside WordPress, build it using your favorite page builder and have it all run on WooCommerce so you don't have to set up any integrations there. It's just a breath of fresh air for me. No click funnels, no SaaS. It's just, it's amazing. It works so well. So, so that's how you'd go ahead and set up these A-B tests with WooFunnels for a checkout page. So the last thing that I wanna cover here is that we just set up two variants. You can set up three variations if you want and assign them you know, 25, 25 and 50%. Uh, that was just an example that I thought that was worth mentioning. So that's how you go and set up an A-B test for a, a WooCommerce checkout page using WooFunnels. So now I wanna give you some ideas of the things that you'd probably wanna go and test for your checkout page. So one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen and I've been a victim of is just assuming that what works for someone else is going to work for me. And that's not the case. So a really good example of this is that I ran an A-B test on my website where on the checkout form, I had Google address autocomplete on and I ran it as an A-B test. And no matter what, I couldn't get it to convert at the same rate as just not having it enabled and having people fill out their address on their own. I don't know what it is. Like in theory, having somebody type in a little bit of their address and it just auto fill all the forms for their address, it would save time. You'd think that it would work better, but no matter what, every test that I run, it didn't work. So that's just one example of taking what people say is better running it for yourself and it not being the case. And it just, it really makes you question a lot of the things that you have just taken for granted not test it yourself. So I want to show you some of these things that I would recommend you set up for yourself and then how to actually go and set them up inside WooFunnels. So before we move on, I'll show you how to actually just go and declare a variant a winner. So this was our Shopify. This was our variation. If this one was converting at a higher rate, we just click over here and then we go declare as winner and you can read that. We go declare winner. And now that one is actually set as our global checkout. So if we go back to our website, and then we go to our checkout page. This one is now our default global checkout. So it happens behind the scene as soon as you declare the winner. Really cool, I just thought that was just worth showing. So let's go back. So the first test that I'm gonna show you how to set up is that Google address autocomplete test. So we will go back to experiments and we'll go add new and we'll go checkout page, save and continue. And we're gonna do the global checkout and this will be address autocomplete, create experiment and then we'll duplicate and configure traffic and we'll make this equal weight 50% each, update, next. And then we'll edit the variant. And whereas last time we were in the design tab and then we changed the design, we left these all the same. What we're going to do now is go to the optimizations tab and then Google address autocomplete, we will enable and then click save changes. And now that's done. So this variation has this activated and the other one does not. So what we will do quickly is we'll just rename this. It's always a good habit to get into. So this will be address autocomplete and then we'll go back and then we click start and then start now. And now 50% of our traffic are going to have that feature enabled. And over time, we can see if it actually makes us more money. Again, WooFunnels just makes it so easy for all those things that we've questioned is, should we be activating this? Should we be doing this? It's just so easy to set it up that you're more likely to just go and do it and see for yourself than just read a blog post and assume whatever they said works for you. Because like I said, it didn't work for me. So that's how you'd set that up. Now, just one thing to point out with that particular A-B test is that you need to set up your API key so that when it's doing that, it can pull data from Google and you would do that just under settings here. So the global settings for WooFunnels and then under checkouts and then address autocomplete. Uh, you can go here to the Woo docs and see how to get your API key. You would paste it in there and then it can pull the data. So I showed you how to set it up, but you just need to do this first particular experiment. So that is that there. Let's go into the next test. The next test that I wanna show you how to set up is a multi-step form versus a single step form. Now, what I would recommend, and as I said previously in this video, is that the first test after you install WooFunnels is you set up an A-B test and you just choose two different designs that come with WooFunnels and you run them as a test. And you 
run those using a multi-step form on both of them. So the only thing that you're changing in those two tests is the design. Now, once you have a winner from that initial test, you would set that as your new global checkout. It would be the winner. So it'd become your new normal. And then I'd create a second AV test and I would take that winner, duplicate that variant. And then this initial one was a three-step multi-form. I would make this one, the new one, I would make it a one-step form and I would run that as my second AV test. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But that's the order that I would go out and do it. Now, before we set up this test, I want you to pay attention to the status column here. So this one here where I had the two global checkout designs, I went, this one was a winner. And so now that's marked as completed. The address autocomplete, we started that experiment, but I haven't stopped it yet. So if we click to create a new experiment and we go checkout page and save and continue, and then we select our global checkout. You can see it says an experiment is already running. So this is a really good fail safe. This is good because you don't wanna have a page with heaps of different tests running on it because your results are gonna be invalidated because you're not gonna know exactly that that one thing you changed caused that, had that exact causation. So it's just saying that basically you can only run one test on the one page at a time. And that's just basically gonna make the integrity of your tests, the data and the results you get from it, uh, integ integrity, have integrity. You know what I'm trying to say. So let's go back. So we could pause this one or we could set a winner. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this one. And now that's done. So we can go ahead and click add new, checkout page, save and continue, select our global checkout. And this is gonna be multi-step versus single, create experiment. And here we're gonna duplicate the current one and then configure traffic. And I'm gonna make this equal. And now we have our original and our variant. Everything is exactly the same. Click edit. And now we're going under field. And you can see we have the one step, two step and three step. Now you can drag fields. You can create your own custom fields saved to orders. So you have access to order meta, uh, but you can go ahead and basically design the form any way that you want. Payment gateways is going to be uh, on the third one. So we need to just put all the step two and step three fields onto step one and delete these. So step two has the shipping methods and order summary. So we can just go and add that. So information, shipping address, we can go methods. So here, shipping methods, add section. And then over here, we just need to get rid of that. And now we can drag it into here and then order summary. So we'll go over here, add new section. And then here, just get rid of that one. And now it's here, we can drag that into there. Step three was just the payment gateways and that just adds on the end automatically anyway. So we can delete step three, delete step two. Now we have a one step form. So we can save changes and then up here we can go preview. And now we've created a one step form with the exact same design as our original variant that we're gonna be testing against. So I just split the screen so you can see what we're doing here. So on the left hand side, this is our original, the multi-step with the three different steps. So they go proceed to next step. So you can see that it's all the same design, the same header. The, the only thing that we've changed here, again, you only wanna change one thing for each test. So you know that one thing had causation caused that result. The one thing that we've changed is breaking this from three steps into just one step. So now that that's done and we've set that up, we'd go back to our dashboard and then here we click start and then start now and that would start running. You could also start it later if you want. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but yeah, that's how you'd go and set up that particular experiment. A really good one, uh, one that I think everyone should go out and test. So in this section, we're gonna go through all the different settings you have available inside the WooFunnels plugin. I'm gonna give you some thoughts and how I use some of the settings. It's gonna be very fast paced. This is more about just showing you what the interface looks like so you can stop and pause it and think about how you might use each of these different settings. So if I'm moving really fast here, it's not that I don't think these settings are not important. It's just that you know you can pause. And, I, and if I was to go through all these different settings, we'd be here for hours. So again, I'm just showing you what the interface looks like, okay? So you get understanding of what's available to you. So we're going to start off with the dashboard. So this is your overview. This is where you can see uh, how many contacts you, you sold to, the orders, order bumps, upsells, revenue per contact. So all your data is here. Uh, the top checkouts. So if you have heaps of different sales funnels running plus your global checkout, you can see which one's bringing in the most money. Uh, your top order bumps, your top customers and your top selling products and so on. So that's a really good overview over there. So next we'll go down to settings. 
and then we'll come back to those two. So there's not too much stuff that I wanna cover in this particular video for these other tabs here. If we quickly go through, you can add CSS and JavaScript here. Your checkouts, that's where you put your API key for your Google Maps. This global checkout, that's where you choose your checkout ID there. Uh, order bumps, one click upsells, this sort of stuff, um, and, and logs and so on. We're gonna stick just here in general, and this is where you can add your pixel. So your Facebook pixel, uh, your Google Analytics pixel, and so on there. And then you can change the permalinks for the custom post types if you want. But that's basically the settings area there. If we go to experiments, okay, so this is where you'd start and stop your experiments. If we go into an actual experiment, so just say uh, this one here, we can go to variants where we'd add new variants, or we can go to analytics. And this is where you get in-depth reports about your tests. So you have some graphs here, so you could see uh, the revenue and the views that are coming from each of your variations. And then you have this table format down here. Uh, if you just wanna reset the stats for any reason, you'd come here under settings and you would just reset the experiment there. It just resets the stats, but the, uh, the experiment's still running. So that's that. And then let's go to funnels. And for this one, we're gonna go add new and I'm gonna build a sales funnel because I haven't shown you the products tab. So we're gonna import a complete funnel and we're gonna go down and we're gonna do this pet one here. So four steps, we'll go import. So we have our sales page, checkout, upsells, and thank you. You can see these red uh, boxes here saying there's no products there. So if we send people to this sales page, which looks like this, and then they click to go to the checkout page. Here, you can see it says no products in this checkout. Because this is a sales funnel and it's not our global checkout, people aren't gonna be adding products to their cart and then going to this checkout page. So we need to assign products that will be associated with people buying from this checkout page. So that's exactly if we go to this and we edit this. So let's go edit. And then we get the tabs up here. The design is the look of the actual checkout page. Products, so here we go add new. And we're just gonna add a product. So I think there's t-shirts in this install. So t-shirt with logo and we'll click add product. And now we'll say this is going to be, maybe it's a sale. So our Facebook ads going to this landing page to buy this t-shirt and it's gonna be 10% uh, off our regular price. So we'll click save changes. And now if we go back, so we have our Facebook ad or whatever, it's gonna go here. People are reading about our t-shirt. They click to order this t-shirt. They would land on this page, the t-shirts added to their cart and it has a 10% off the regular price and they can go through and purchase this t-shirt. Uh, the next thing that I wanna show you while we're here is if we actually edit this checkout page, or we'll actually add an order bump. Let's just say that they can buy this t-shirt but there's a hat, so bonus hat deal and click add. And then we're gonna edit this one. So add product and we'll go hat. Okay, let's do a beanie. I think there's a beanie in this install. Yep, add product. And the beanie we're gonna give them for 35% uh, off the regular price. And you can choose where that shows, but I'll click save. If you don't know what I'm doing here, the design tab's gonna show you exactly what this is. You've probably seen these before. So it looks like this, it's on your checkout form and you can go ahead. So it'll be like add this beanie to my order. I would say this beanie matches your t-shirt exclusive club deal, something like that. And then we'll just go and click save You can upload the photo there. And now if we go back and refresh this checkout page, so we have our form, go down, go down. And now we have this here and they can go, yes, add to their order for $20. That's gonna update their cart up here. And then they can go and purchase that. So if somebody goes through here and they actually buy that for the $18, um, that's you know obviously $18 that you wouldn't have had without that order bump. And again, this is all built into WooFunnels. It's, now you can actually add this on your global checkout as well. So if we go and edit our global checkout, so if we, if we edit our global checkout, and then we click add order bump. Maybe uh, it's a limited time offer and it's just Christmas and we're gonna give a free or a cheap Christmas beanie. So Christmas beanie special, X like that. We'll go add new and then here we'll go edit and then products add beanie like that, add product. Okay, and we're gonna give 50% uh, off the regular price and it's gonna show below the payment gateway. So we'll save that and then under design, Add our famous Christmas beanie to your cart, only 50 made. So we'll just go down and click save there. And then we could do rules, so add rule. And then here for rules, maybe we only wanna give this to people that live in the United States where we are because shipping's just gonna be too much for this really cheap product outside the US. So we'll go shipping country, matches, and then we'll do United States like that. And then we'll click save changes. And now let's go to our global checkout. And then if we go to checkout, so if we scroll down and go next step, and this is set to Australia currently. So if we keep going down and go to final step, 
we can see that this is what it looks like. There's no order bump. But if we go back and we change our ship to address and we change it to the United States, like Beverly Hills 90210, that's what I always use. And then we go proceed to next step. So confirming all that. Yep, that looks good. And then we go final step and we're confirming all that, we go down and now it says, would you like to add this beanie to your order? So really cool feature. And it's just an extra way to add a lot more revenue that you wouldn't otherwise have by just forcing things in the checkout process. It's This is so effective. It, it is incredibly effective. I wouldn't actually run a checkout page without something like an order bump like this because it's so easy to set up and it just makes so much extra money. So if you are looking to purchase with funnels and I genuinely feel that there's not an e-commerce brand out there or somebody that's selling anything online, a digital product, a course creator, a consultant, a coach, if you have sales funnels or you're basically just selling anything online, Woo Funnels is a no brainer. It's like $179 for the starter package a year. And if you break that down into how many products you probably need to sell to offset that, versus how many extra sales that this could make with the order bumps, the one-time offers, uh, the ability to A-B test your checkout pages, get designs up and going really, really fast. Like it literally is is a no-brainer for me. But, you know, I don't, I don't want to convince you otherwise, but here I just want to go through the different pricing and just explain it. And then obviously you just go out and make the best decision for you and your circumstance. Because there's a couple of things that aren't quite clear when you get to their checkout page, and this is going to help you. For me personally, in my position, I was paying for click funnels $2,000 a year. I'd been using sales funnels for multiple years. It was a no-brainer for me to buy the lifetime deal. It was cheaper than a year of click funnels to buy the lifetime deal. It was a one-off fee. And I, based on my previous experience, experience, I'm reliant on sales funnels and my e-commerce brand. So it wasn't a risk to me. It just, it was so, it just made so much sense to me. It was better and cheaper and it, yeah, it was a one-off fee. Okay. So, um, you know, I've left a blog post about the lifetime deal cause it's a little bit hard to find on their website. So in the description below under this video, you can click a link to go to my blog post, which is here, read about why I bought it. And then there's a button here. It's my affiliate link. It'd really be cool uh, if you got any value from this video, if you use my affiliate links, but no pressure. Uh, but yeah, this explains why I went with the lifetime deal. So let's go over to their website and here under pricing. And then here under pricing, if we go down, there's two tabs here, solopreneur and agency. And under each of these, there's two more, and then you have annual and lifetime. So we'll go through these. So solopreneur. So the two different ones that you have here are the funnel builder or the funnel builder plus autonomy. So we really need to define and understand what autonomy is so that the rest of this section is gonna make sense. So what is Autonomy? It is a separate plugin that you get. And the best way to show you what it is, is to show you how it works. So if we go to my blog website, wagepirate.com, here under Autonomy, we have contacts, automations, broadcasts. Based on that, you get the idea of what it does. It's sort of like your active campaign, it's your CRM, but it's also like your Clavio. It does automations and it's like your active campaign where you can uh, do like, if a tag is added to the contact, send them this email or add them to this list. It's sort of that sort of stuff. So I'll show you a couple of the examples that I use here on my blog. And then I'll show you some of the examples and ways that I've used Autonomy in my WooCommerce website. So here on my blog, the reason that I really like Autonomy uh, as a blog owner is because I have my other business to run and I haven't put much effort into growing my blog. And I basically just wanted the way to store my contacts, you know, from my YouTube videos over time in case I wanted to email them later on. So it was sort of like a dormant business that had content out there that was slowly getting contacts in there. I wanted to save them up for a rainy day. But then I was doing that in active campaign and I was paying like $89 a month. So I was paying $89 a month just to house contacts in case I wanted them in the future. And it just didn't make sense to me. So with Autonomy, it lives in WordPress. This is $179 for an entire year. So I just let it just, uh, you know, house my contacts for a while. So this worked out really well for me. I think bloggers are really going to find a lot of value from it uh, if you're doing that sort of stuff. But automations for my blog, it's uh, if we go into something like my lead magnet. So you can see if somebody submits my form, I create a contact in Autonomy and then I send them this email like so and then I could add them to a list. Now, you guys are here because you guys are store owners. So let's focus specifically on WooCommerce, but I thought that's just a really good way to um, show why this is good for a blogger. If we go over to here and we're in my demo install and we go to Autonomy and we go to Automation. So let's go ahead and click Add New and we're gonna do uh, Order Processing. We'll go Add. So here, select Event. So you could do Order Created, uh, but here we're gonna do Order Status Change, Continue. 
and we're gonna do from any status to processing. So when an order goes into processing status, so we've, we've taken their payment, we've got an order, what we're gonna do here is we're going to do a direct action and we're gonna send an email. And then in this email, we're gonna call it order receipt and then we're gonna add a merge tag and we're gonna put their order ID. And then we'll say hi, and then I'll just add a merge tag. And then so first like that, like that. And then the merge tag over here, we can go up to here and we're gonna do items. So to order items. And then here you have different layouts. We want the WooCommerce order summary. So we'll copy to clipboard, save that there. And now if we go down and generate a preview, you can see that we've just designed the order receipt email. So hi, this, uh, thanks for your order today. This is what you ordered. Please reply back because we ship out ASAP. This is what they ordered. So now that, is all good to go. So we could actually turn this on and then go under WooCommerce and settings. And then under emails, if we scroll down where it says processing order to the customer, we can go ahead and go manage and we could turn that off. So that's what I've done. I've disabled every WooCommerce email here and I've built it inside Autonami. And the reason that I've done that is because it's, it's just so much more powerful. I can do, when they place an order, send them an email here, and then I could generate a coupon code and then send them another email if I wanted to. Like I can do that all here inside Autonami. Uh, but what I really like is I can design the emails a whole lot better using a drag and drop builder. So if we click onto this and we go up, so we have rich text, raw HTML, we have drag and drop. So if we go launch editor, we can go and start dragging in columns. We could add an image in there for our logo and then in blocks, we could add another block here and then we could add our order items. So to add order items, we just um, add content and then we'd add some text over here and then we get rid of that and then merge tags. So we have access to all of these. So items, so order items, exactly the same as what we just did, order product summary, we we'll paste that in there. This over here, let's just actually go ahead and we'll add an image, so image like that. I'll just select that image. So we're gonna do this one here, wage pirate, select. So there's our image. You guys get the idea, but you can build it however you want. I mean, columns, we could do two columns as well if we wanted to, like that. And you could have a picture there, some text there. It's just so much easier. You can make such better WooCommerce emails here directly from this plugin. So if you are sick and tired of those boring WooCommerce emails that come out of the box, which I was, but I could never find a really easy way to do it. So not only can you build better looking emails using a drag and drop builder, uh, but if we save that and go back, you also have the ability to do more. Like after this email, we could go and add a, another action and go over to here and we could do any of these. So here we could uh, update their contact field. Uh, in WordPress, we could create or update their user role. In WooCommerce, we can create a coupon and then we can send them an email with that coupon. Uh, and you could do things as well. So if somebody purchases, you can do a condition here and go, if it is their first order, yes, then you would create a coupon code just for uh, people that have their new orders. But if it's their second order, then you don't give them a coupon code and so on. You can also customize the email. So if, so if it is their first order, we could actually just go and copy this and then paste that over there. And so the first order, we could just uh, give them like a bit of a welcome spill at the start. So we say, hey, welcome to our business, yada, yada. But if it's not their first order, then maybe we send them a different email. So order receipt, but we don't have that text at start. You just do so much more in here, better looking emails, more complex stuff all within WordPress. So that should give you an idea of some of the stuff and some of the ways that I use this inside my business. So if we go back here, okay, so we have the funnel builder. You guys, you guys are experts now. You guys have watched this whole video. If you got to this point, please give a like this video so I know that people are getting to this point because I'm having a lot of fun making these longer uh, tutorials, but I hope that you guys aren't, you know, clicking away. So if you like these longer form videos, please let me know in the comments below as well. So Funnel Builder, Autonami, you get the idea what they are. Why I really like these together is Autonami has access to all your WooCommerce data because it's in that Woo, uh, WordPress install and Funnel Builder increases your revenue. So you have sort of like your front end money generating machine from the Funnel Builder and then you have your back end email automations, uh, that sort of complex stuff. And they just work hand in hand from the same team. Their integration is really deep and it just works. It works really, really well. So on that note, now that we've gone through you know those two things, I would recommend out of these two here, going and paying the extra 70 bucks a year and getting Autonami as the add-on. So that's what I would recommend there. Now the agency up to 30 sites, 
uh, I mean, you guys are going to know whichever one you guys need here. Uh, if you are a solopreneur running at scale, paying a lot of money for something like ClickFunnels or a SaaS, I don't think you will regret going the lifetime deal for the uh, 1500 bucks here. Again, it's all going to be about your personal uh, preference here. This was a no brainer for me, um, but that's where you find the lifetime deal. So it is under agency, but as a solopreneur, um, I went with it as well. So, so next thing that I'd recommend is check the description under this video. I've left links to important things that I think will really help you get more information about what we've discussed here in this video and guide you in the right direction to see if WooFunnels is right for you. And then what I'd recommend doing is what Watching either this video here, two insane WooCommerce plugins, or this business advice here. Two different things that I think are really going to help you if you've got to the end of this video. So I'll leave links to both of them in the description below here. But this business advice here, it's really changed the way that I'm approaching 2022. So I definitely recommend checking that one out as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know in the comments below. Give me a like. And to support this channel, any clicks on my affiliate links are much appreciated. So on this video now, see you guys in the next one.